work in my lab focuses on neurovascular mechanisms of inflammation and tissue repair. And uh, during the course of this work, we made discoveries uh, at the neurovascular interface, uh, discovering new mechanisms of how blood proteins interact with nervous system cells. And uh, what we found is that microglia cells are key uh, players uh, that uh, um, are uh, activated by uh, changes at the neurovascular uh, interface in disease. And we found that uh, these cells uh, um, uh, are mediating both neurodegeneration as well as also uh, changes in uh, a brain uh, hyperexcitability. Uh, the work that I will be presenting uh, at the conference focuses uh, specifically on the role of microglia cells uh, as this novel homeostatic role that we discovered in uh, the regulation of brain network uh, synchronization. Um, so what uh, we showed, we developed the first chemogenetic model uh, to be able to block microglia uh, brain surveillance and dynamic motility. Uh, it has been known for several years that microglia cells can constantly Constantly survey uh, the brain uh, in, um, the, in the normal physiological state. And uh, why the brain expends so much energy to keep these cells in this constant motility uh, remained unknown. So our work uh, filled that uh, gap uh, in knowledge uh, by developing a chemogenetic model to stop these microglia processes from surveying the brain. And we did this by uh, specifically expressing in a cell-specific manner uh, a, the H1 subunit of pertussis toxin, and we blocked GI signaling in the microglia cells. So the brain now could, of these mice could have microglia, but these cells could not perform any more surveillance. And also they could not uh, respond to stimuli like the uh, trauma stimuli, like laser ablation. Or when we encaged glutamate in the brain, they also could not respond to this excitotoxic uh, stimuli. Uh, so we wanted to ask the question, uh, what is the phenotype of this mouse? And to our surprise, some of these mice spontaneously uh, developed uh, seizure uh, activity, um, giving us the first indication that perhaps this constant microglia motility uh, was responsible for uh, 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 suppressing uh, this hyperexcitability uh, in the brain. Um, and indeed, when we induced seizures in mice by administration of a drug called pilocarbine, uh, these mice had a really higher susceptibility uh, to, to, seizure, uh, to, to, to seizures. Um, we also combined uh, uh, this uh, research by developing of a uh, high resolution in vivo to photon imaging to be able to image simultaneously in an awake animal both neuronal activity and also microglia surveillance. And there we made this unexpected observation that when we evoke physiologically neuronal activity uh, in the mouse, microglia increase their surveillance to areas where there is increased uh, activity. Um, and uh, at these areas that surveillance increases, the uh, uh, neuronal activity is uh, suppressed, uh, showing that uh, microglia not only respond to, uh, to uh, increased uh, neuronal activity, but this response is, uh, uh, is required uh, to keep uh, neuronal activity within a physiological uh, range. Um, we also performed rescue experiments to be able to rescue these effects. And uh, we found that when we um, uh, keep raw GTPases that are important for cytoskeletal rearrangements in an active state, we can rescue these effects, uh, giving us perhaps some potential therapeutic strategies uh, to rein in hyperexcitability by specifically interfering with these pathways uh, in microglia. This uh, uh, discovery opens uh, uh, new uh, avenues of research, especially since uh, um, impaired microglia dynamics and impaired microglia motility uh, is uh, a hallmark of many neurological diseases, uh, uh, including uh, neurological diseases like Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, but also uh, psychiatric uh, disorders. So this uh, uh, one of the uh, immediate questions is to find whether this mechanism Mechanisms that we found in physiology in the normal brain, uh, whether this mechanism is also active during disease uh, pathogenesis. And uh, if uh, this is the case, uh, then uh, to explore whether the uh, um, tools that we are developing, we developed from our, our disease, our, our research in brain physiology, whether these uh, tools uh, could be used uh, to rein in hyperactivity in uh, models of uh, disease. Uh, because uh, a way that we can 
can think of therapeutically intervening with this pathway is whether we can make microglia cells resilient to any impaired of microglia dynamics that could be uh, induced by extrinsic uh, mechanisms in the lesion environment in different diseases. Um, an example of this is uh, from our research on the blood-brain barrier. We found that blood-brain barrier leaks in the brain that occurs in uh, uh, autoimmune, neurodegenerative, and traumatic diseases. These uh, alter uh, this surveillance uh, of microglia and microglia cells perivascularly cluster, specifically in the areas with impaired, uh, uh, with impaired blood-brain barrier uh, um, uh, in the brain and the increased extravasation of blood proteins. So uh, this uh, is uh, something that uh, would be really, um, I think, uh, for clinically relevant, whether we can make these cells resilient to these uh, uh, signals from the environment that impair their capacity uh, to survey the brain and thus impair their capacity uh, to uh, uh, regulate uh, um, uh, 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 neuronal synchronization and suppress hyperexcitability.